Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Vicent, and today we're gonna discuss something a little different. See, in my day-to-day -day job, uh, I work for a big tech company. And one of the things that I have noticed over the years is the sheer amount of disruption tech does. And what I mean by that is things we used to do are no longer things we do because technology has made other aspects of that industry simply more convenient. You can look at how much we all shop on Amazon as a prime example. And so I started thinking about it with my cars and realizing that both the cars I own are relatively new players to the market. And they both took on established players and established pieces of the auto market using the same philosophy, technology. lesson here. Now Tesla is not the first electric vehicle on the market. There were plenty of electric vehicles prior to Tesla. They just all sucked. In fact, electric vehicles have been around since the early 1920s. What made this one stand out was again technology. See the founders of Tesla, you heard me, founders. Elon Musk actually didn't found Tesla. Find Tesla? Found Tesla? Doesn't matter. See, the founders of Tesla previously had founded the first e-reader. You know, think Kindle, but before Kindle. See, what these guys realized was, just like a lot of technology, car manufacturing was a game of suppliers, right? Everybody made parts, and then a lot of manufacturers just put them together. And so these guys were like, well, hey, we've done that before with our e-reader, let's just do it with a car. They loved electric cars, but there was something faulty in them, and that was, well, the batteries. And these guys knew batteries. More specifically, lithium ion batteries from their e-reader. And that's what they put into this car. That's what changed the game. So guys, now let's start off with one quick piece of history that gets a little confusing. See, there's McLaren Automotive, and there's McLaren cars. And well, they both share the name McLaren. They're actually two different companies. See, McLaren Automotive created the F1. You know, the best car to ever be made. So one quick fun piece of trivia with the F1. Um, it was the brainchild of a plane delay. Yeah, no, it's, tr it's true. Uh, Gordon Murray's sitting around with his buddies in an airport, their plane is delayed, and they concoct the idea to build the perfect driver's car. And then they went out and did it. In an airport. So similar to Tesla, McLaren decided to take on some established players. Now, not the mass market car, but the exotic car. And from a history and a fan perspective, this may have been an even bigger task than Tesla's. See, you have Ferrari and Lamborghini and their history, the media fanboys, their ownership fanboys, and fanboys all around the world. And now I'm using fanboys very strategically here as we all like to call Tesla fanboys as these ones that are part of a cult that can't see flaws within Tesla. Well, the reality is that was started a long time ago. We just don't call them fanboys. And that was with Lamborghini and Ferrari fans. And Jeremy Clarkson is famous for saying that uh, those cars had a soul and McLaren didn't. And Donut Media made a joke. It's because, well, these guys start every time. And the reality is those old Ferraris and Lamborghinis were plagued with issues. They were prioritized so much on the thrill and the experience of driving them. And sometimes there were compromises on some pretty basic things. You can take the Mercy, for example, and you're actually seated at an angle. Talk about making it difficult to center your car on the road. You're not even facing straight. Ferrari, water leaks, leather issues, Sometimes they start, sometimes they, they don't. Now when these cars operated, they had a tremendous 
upside. They were ridiculously fun and amazing and inspiring cars to drive. But they had their flaws, and yet they still sold, and people loved them by the millions. And so what did McLaren do? McLaren took the same model and brought technology to the game. So how do you disrupt the market when it's been around for decades with brands that everybody knows? Well, you've got to make a big splash. You've got to do something that proves your technology, that proves you were right, and that is a little bit out there, a little bit flashy, a little bit splashy, something that's going to bring people to your brand. So what did these guys do? What did Tesla do? Well, they didn't want to spend all their money developing and designing a car. So rather, again, the supplier game, they went out and got a Lotus and ripped it apart and put an electric drivetrain and batteries into it. And in 2008, they brought out the Roadster. Now that has somewhat of a cult following, right? People are clamoring to get their hands on an original Roadster and there's a new Roadster coming out. It changed the game. It put their brand out there so that everybody knew Tesla could produce an incredible car. See, what McLaren did was it lightened the car. It brought carbon fiber to every aspect of it, including its monocoque. It took a rather small V8 engine and turbocharged it, cranking its horsepower far beyond numbers seen traditionally in this community outside of your high-end V12s. And then it went out on a limb, similar to Tesla with the Roadster, and it created one of the three Holy Trinity cars, the P1. You ever heard of it? So they established their brand just like Tesla. Suddenly now they had a halo car, a car that others aspired to reach. And then they came in and, let's say, improved their initial run with the MP4-12C, with this, the 650S. And then they started cranking out car after car after car, each one seemingly faster and better than its predecessor. After the Roadster, they had to do something special again. And well, that comes in the form of money. See, they didn't sell a ton of Roadsters, but at least not enough to start producing mass quantities of cars that are gonna be seen everywhere like the Model 3 is. No, they had to go and get affluent people who believed in the technology, who wanted to be the first one so they could tell their golf club buddies, I got an electric car. So they attacked the luxury market with the Model S to prove this technology could not just work, but work in luxury cars, work in fast cars, work in cars that people wanted. And it succeeded. It's kind of fun when you think about it, right? Because when you think about technology, so often we think about the computer chips and the digital displays and the things that we associate with that. So your cell phone, TVs, computers, electronics. Not so often do you think of technology being the output of an engine, the design of a vehicle for its airflow, the materials used on the vehicle to lighten it up, the way it puts its power down and transfers power between its wheels, its underbody aero, its air brake. See, McLaren brought a tremendous amount of technology, just not in the way we all think of it. But just like Tesla, they operate very similar to that of a tech company. They're clinical, they're clean, and their cars resemble that. And the Model S birthed, birthed, birthed. And they succeeded. The Model S came and then came the Model X, then the Model 3, then the Model Y. And I'm not gonna say what those spell out to be. You guys can figure that out. Anyway. And do we think the similarities between McLaren and Tesla stop there? No. Just like Tesla, they were plagued with build quality issues, plagued with financial trouble, plagued with business model critics, media critics, fans of the traditional players coming in and, and bad-mouthing them. But just like Tesla, the owners loved them and kept coming back for more. 
See, most people that own a McLaren don't just own one. No, they own another one and another one. And so many McLaren owners own just about everyone. See, because once you drive one of these, you realize how special they are. But they're disrupting a part of the industry that has a long storied tradition. And when you do that, you got a lot of people who want to smudge your name when they haven't even driven you. And, and I can hear the argument, right? Well, Tesla doesn't sell that many vehicles. I mean, they're barely a blip on the radar of Ford. Well, that's true. However, Ford just came out with the Mach-E, and you can't help but notice certain tech philosophies from Tesla being in that Ford Mach-E. Would Ford have done it without it? Maybe. But you can't deny the influence. Okay, and I can hear you guys saying it again about McLaren. They really didn't disrupt Lamborghini and Ferrari. Just look at the numbers, look at their pedigree, look at their history. I get it. But the reality is they have. See, pre-McLaren, they were all naturally aspirated and their output was high, but it wasn't to the levels they are today. McLaren has come in and added forced induction into this mix of cars, design elements and features that were never there before. And as Donut Media one time joked around with, McLaren start every time you turn them on and now so do Lamborghinis and Ferraris. And the reality is the horsepower numbers have increased every single year. And a lot of that has to do with McLaren. So did McLaren and Tesla succeed at disrupting the industry? Without a doubt. You can't drive for more than 10 minutes without seeing a Tesla out on the road. And here in California, I've heard a Tesla referred to as a cockroach. You see them everywhere. McLarens? No, you don't see these everywhere. They're still very special and rare, but there's no denying their effect on the other brands. They've succeeded. They've succeeded. They took a model that had nothing to do with their industry to disrupt the very industry they were attacking. I think it's a fantastic look at something that was kind of unique to these two brands. Is this the end of how technology is going to change automotive? <laughs> I highly doubt it, gosh, I hope not. Are we losing some of the spirit of the drive when we look at it this way? Maybe. Or maybe it's just a different spirit. Only time will tell. Anyway guys, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you're notified the next time I upload a video. I'll see you guys in the next one.